Hello everybody, welcome back to another video with Mr. Coder, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to do a bit of a construction, which is question B of Code Forces around 940, Division 2, and Codecraft 23. So basically you're given integers n and k, and you have to construct a sequence of non-negative integers, which has n integers, such that the sum the sum has to be equal to k, which you're given, and then the number of ones in the binary representation of all the all the numbers bitwise ORed to each other is maximized. And it's not looking for the maximum number, it's actually looking for the maximum number of ones in the sequence. So you're given t test cases with n and k, and then so if we look at the first sample, one and five, so you have to have one number in your array. Oh yeah, you have to print out the array, any one that works. So you can't just like find the maximum number. So one and five, then you have to have one number in your array and the, the numbers have to sum up to five. So since you only have one number that says here, we can only output five. And then if we have two and three, this two and three, then you, you can do one and two, because if you think about it, one is zero, one, two is one, zero. So if you X or if you use the bitwise or, and you get one, one. But another thing you can notice is that, well, I'll get to the noticing later, but for the next one, you can do five, zero. And then, so if you do five, zero, then you get, uh, one four and one one, so then you have two ones, which is the maximum number. And then for the last one, as it states here, you can get you can get five ones in the binary. And if you notice an observation here, so the basically the bitwise or. If if there's one, if there's any one one, then it doesn't matter what these are, zero, one, zero. It doesn't matter. Because if there's one one in the bit, at least one, it'll be it'll be one. So if we think about it, what what is the number that has the most ones in the binary? Well, I mean, so if we take four as an example, so four would be one zero zero. But then three then everything else before it, so if we do the power of two minus one, then everything before it will be one. So, I mean, that would work for anything. So, so this would maximize the number of ones. So we think about it for the samples. So this one five, if it's one, you, you can't really do anything about it, but for two, then you try to get the maximum two to the N minus one number. So this is three, so you'd be able to print out three. And then three would be one, one, and then you'd go zero, and zero doesn't change it. So three would basically give you the maximum, and then all the other numbers don't really matter. So if we do the same thing with five, we can't do seven. Seven, seven is the next one. It's two to the three minus one. So we can't do seven, so that means we'll have to do three. So then it'll be three and then two. So it's one, one, and then one, zero, which still results in one, one, which is two ones. So as you see that this, this is also two ones. So then lastly, on the last test case, the 651, the thir 32 is a power of two, which then you can do 31. The next power of two is 64. But if you do 63, then since all numbers are non-negative, it will, will be greater than 51. So that won't work. So, yeah, so if you just do 31, and then you print out the rest of the numbers, which is which will just be 20 and then zeros along the way. It's the rest is zeros. And then this will still be the maximum because this has five ones in it. This will be one, 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 one. It doesn't matter what the other the others are. So that's basically how you do this problem. 
so for my for my code, what I did was I pre-computed all of the all the powers of two minus one. So how I did this was I just got I started the number as two and then I put the I put the numbers in the set and I went through until ten to the nine, which is this number here, because it says that it's a maximum, K is a maximum of ten to the nine. So that's it it, it will be guaranteed to be good. And then I just insert x minus one because that is a maximum one, and then I multiply the original x by two. So then after I do this pre-computing, then I first do this edge case where if n is equal to one, then you just print out k because there's nothing else you can do. But if n is greater than or equal to two, then I print out, because basically in a set, the upper bound goes to the next one available. So that'll be the one that's greater. But the one that's greater won't work for upper bound and lower bound. So upper bound, make sure it's not equal. So then after you subtract it, so then you get then it gets the one lower than or equal to it, which is what we want. The low so then that'll be the maximum number of ones, the number of ones in that binary number. And then you subtract that number from k. So then this number cur, you just print that out, you print out the current k. And then for all the other numbers, you can just print out zero. Since zero won't impact the bitwise or because it's because as long as there's at least one one, it's okay. And then you print out a new line. So if we check then four with these four test cases in the, from the sample, then if we, then we have the five, and then the first one we can do three zero that has two ones, which is correct. The three two it has two ones, which is correct. And this one will have the five ones from two to the power of six minus one. So then that means that this is also correct. And it doesn't matter what, like this is always optimal. Like that's probably the key thing to notice in this problem. So I, overall, this problem, I, I prefer using the binary search, but you probably don't even need to use the binary search because there's only a maximum of two to the 30. So it only takes 30 more. And also because the sum of all test cases does not exceed two times 10 to the fifth. So that means that you could you could do this without upper bound, but that and then you could just have a vector here. But yeah, so, so I think the key thing would be just like using the fact that the or has ones, it has just ones. Like the ones will keep the ones. So yeah. That's basically how you do a bit of of a construction. So yeah, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.